is Sara, and I'm the product manager on Android Permissions. And I have here with me my colleague, Philip, who's a software engineer on Permissions. Over the course of the last two days, we've had a chance to meet a number of you. And we truly appreciate you taking the time to come here, talk to us, tell us your stories and experiences, and give us feedback. Over the next 15 to 20 minutes, Philip and I will provide you with an overview of the permission changes that we introduced in Android 10, and we'll share with you some of the best practices that guide our product development process. On Android, our goal is to give users more transparency and control to their own personal information that's being used by applications. To that end, we have been working to evolve Android to make it much more private. In Android 10, we introduced 50, over 50 uh, privacy features, making it our most privacy-friendly release to date. Just looking at permissions alone, for example, we made a number of changes. Uh, we made privacy and location top-level settings menu. We introduced uh, location, more granular location, as well as added background uh, location reminders. And we made activity recognition a dangerous runtime permission. And as well, we restricted access to um, on-device screen content. Looking at device identifiers, we restricted access to dangerous hardware IDs. As well, we randomized MAC address by default. And finally, looking at background activity, we have restricted background act um, activities launching from background. As well, in Android 9, we restricted access to background mic and camera. This is uh, just a small flavor of some of the changes that we've, we've made to Android. But today, we're actually here to just talk about permissions. So I'm going to hand it over to Philip, who's going to go through more details about some of the changes in Android 10. Thanks, Sarah. First, with Android 10, we wanted to improve the user's understanding of their current privacy configuration. So we added a new top-level privacy setting that links the user to the permissions management, but also to privacy-related information, like, for example, their web activity and their ad settings. Another privacy-related settings is this location setting. In the location settings, you can find which app recently used your locations, but also uh, private, um, location proxies, such as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Users are very sensitive about sharing location data. Hence, in Android 10, we allow the user to choose if they share the location data all the time or only while using the app. Let's look at some use cases. If the app wants to tag a photo or tag a social, um, social media post with location, the user clearly knows it's using the app and um, knows how, how the location is used. Navigation, when the, if the app provides navigation, the user might choose to temporarily use a different app in this case, the, um, we require the app to show a notification, remind the user that the navigation component is still actually using location data. As you can see, I'm not showing any use cases for background location. We believe that background location use cases should become quite rare. Even if the app has a background location feature, the user might still be uncomfortable with sharing the location all the time with this app and the user might deny the access, um, implementation-wise. If your feature requires background location access, you have to add an additional, we call it a modifier permission in your manifest. And this permission is a runtime permission. And when, once it's granted, it grants background access to the ad, um, additional foreground. So it means, in this case, cause a fine location. As you can see, we consider background location something very special. Um, if your app accessing, is accessing location in the background, we'll eventually, some day later, show a notification reminding the user that user has the choice to deny background access. There's two additional changes in Android 10 I want to talk about. In Android 9 and before, activity recognition was not considered user sensitive. In Android 10, we considered user sensitive. Hence, you get user consent, 
you ask for a runtime permission, and the user can say yes or no. Um, this is the name of runtime permission, and you ask for it like any other runtime permission. Screen decoding is another very sensitive topic for the user. Hence, we enforce user consent by requiring all apps to go through the Media Protection Manager API. Let's see how this looks like. So in order to use this, you have to create a foreground service with a specific type. Then you start a foreground service. Once the foreground service is connected, you start the um, consent activity. The user can then say yes or no. Once the user says yes, you start the projection. Let me hand it back to Sarah to talk, talk about the motivations behind these changes. Thanks, Philip. Um, I'll spend the rest of this session uh, talking about some of the research we've done in this space and describe how those insights actually drive a lot of our uh, product decisions and development. So we know that most apps tend to request access to permissions, usually all at once or up front or during um, onboarding. But users have continuously told us that they prefer when an app asks for permission when they understand the, understand the reason for that permission. And we can see that. When we poll our, our users, we see that only 18% only of them have every single permission granted on their devices. And when we ask them why they eventually grant a permission, the top reason that they state is that they want to use a specific feature of an app or they want to experience a feature. So this demonstrates that users are more likely to share their data with applications when they understand and get the, what the value of it is and, they, and it sounds very logical to them. And we also are seeing that users are choosing to share less data. So as we mentioned, we introduced the new uh, changes in location, more granular location permission, and now we're seeing in our data that over half the users are selecting while the app is in use. And through our studies, uh, we have learned that users actually understand what while in use means, and they're making their choice intentionally. And finally, our data actually highlights really high sensitivity towards mic and camera. So as I mentioned, we actually removed access to background mic and camera, but we never really indica indicated that in the runtime permission. So in our future release of Android, we'll actually will change the wording to say while in use, so the user doesn't have to worry about uh, their data being accessed in the background. As I mentioned earlier, we have a set of best practices that we like to share with developers. Um, I'll, I'll summarize some of them here uh, today. So first, we ask that you review your permissions. Request the minimum permissions that your features need. So for example, check to see if there are alternative APIs. If there are other alternative APIs that give you the data you need, please choose to use them instead of permissions. They tend to be much narrower in scope and hence more privacy friendly. We also ask to please review your permissions, um, request permissions in context and for the use case. So as we've illustrated, users are willing to share data, but they just need to understand the perceived value. Please pay attention to your permissions required by libraries. Your users don't distinguish between the data that your app is using and the third-party SDKs are. So please understand the permissions that your SDKs require. And minimize the use of location, especially background location. As Philip uh, has illustrated, um, really access uh, to foreground is generally enough for most location use cases. And also, design your app to work under the conditions that you will have only uh, while in use. Because se we've seen more than half the users are selecting while in use, and you may never actually have access to background. And finally, we ask that you're transparent about the data that you're using. Let your users know why you need access to that data. These best practices are based on principles and values that drive our product development process. And they will continue to drive how we innovate in this space. And we really hope that you continue to work with us and give us feedback in making our ecosystem safer for all of our users. 
So that concludes our presentation today. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I think we're going back upstairs. We also have a sandbox. If you haven't stopped by yet, we have another hour left, so please do so. Um, and we'd love to uh, hear your use cases, especially if you have location use cases or whatever it is, let us know about them. Um, we just want to understand uh, your applications a lot better. Uh, thank you very much for spending the last uh, few minutes with us, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you.